Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on refraction and lenses. The topic of this video is determining an end value, and we want to know how can you analyze the path of light through a material in order to determine the index of refraction of that material. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. A light ray will undergo a change in direction as it crosses the boundary between two materials. We refer to this as refraction. Snell's law describes the mathematical relationship between the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction at the boundary. The Snell's law equation looks like this. In the equation, the NI and NR symbols represent the indices of refraction of the incident and the refractive material, and the theta I and theta R symbols represent the angles of incidence and the angle of refraction. It's important to note that these angles are measured between the light ray and the normal line. This topic was introduced in a previous video called the Snell's Law of Refraction. I've left a link to it in the description section of this video if you need to review it. In this video I will be using the Snell's Law equation in order to calculate the index of refraction of an unknown material. In this, the first of four example problems, I'll be using the Snell's Law equation in order to calculate the index of refraction of an unknown material. I am told that the light ray is in water approaching the boundary with the unknown material, and I'm told that the angle of incidence is 63 degrees, and the index of refraction of water is 1.33. So I begin by writing down what I know. I am asked to measure the angle of refraction in this unknown material and to calculate the index of refraction. So I'm going to lay a protractor down upon the diagram and measure the angle between the refracted ray and the normal line. That angle comes out to be 45 degrees. So I now know three of the four quantities in the Snell's Law equation. I'm going to take these three known quantities and substitute it into the Snell's Law equation in an effort to solve for Nx, the index of refraction of this unknown material. So now I do my algebra by dividing both sides of the equation by the sine of 45 degrees. The equation looks like this. Then I use my calculator to calculate the index of refraction of material x. I multiply 1.33 times the sine of 63 degrees and then divide by the sine of 45 degrees. Make sure that your calculator's angle mode is set to degrees and if you do you'll get 1.68 as your final answer. The second of four example problems centers around the analysis of a lab that is commonly performed in a first year physics course. In the lab, laser light is used to determine the index of refraction of an unknown material. The light is shined from air into a block of the unknown material and out the other side, and measurements must be made in order to determine the end value of the unknown. The analysis begins by collecting measurements for the angle of incidence and angle of refraction at the two boundaries. At the top boundary where light bends as it enters into the unknown material, I can place a protractor down and measure the angle of incidence in the air and the angle of refraction in the unknown material. I get approximately 50 degrees and 35 degrees. And measurements can be made at the second boundary where the light exits the unknown material. Placing a protractor down on this boundary, I can measure the angle of incidence in, within the unknown material to be about 35 degrees and the angle of refraction is 50 degrees. We get the same values for the angle in the air and the angle in the unknown material. This is not surprising whenever opposite sides are parallel. Now I will use my measured values to determine the index of refraction of material X. I'll perform calculations for both the top and the bottom boundary. When I take my known values and substitute it in to the Snell's Law equation, the equation becomes 1.00 times the sine of 50 equal NX times the sine of 35 degrees. I'll divide both sides of the equation by the sine of 35 degrees and then use my calculator to find the index of refraction of material X. It comes out to be about 1.3355 and some change. Now even though I got the same values for the second boundary, I'm going to perform my calculations a second time. For some students, because of measurement error, you may get different values for that second boundary and it's important to perform that second calculation. When I substitute into the Snell's Law equation with the same numbers, I get the same equation, the algebra looks the same, and the final result is still 1.3355. Now if you have different numbers here, it's important that you take the two numbers and average them, add them together and divide by two in in order to get an average value for the index of refraction. For me, I'm going to round it to the second decimal place. It's about 1.34. 
The third of four example problems also centers around the analysis of a commonly performed lab in a first year physics class. In the lab, a laser light is shined into and out of a triangular prism of unknown material and measurements must be made in order to determine the index of refraction of this unknown material. And so the analysis begins by collecting data for the angles of incidence and refraction at each of the two boundaries. So on the left side of the triangle where light is entering into the into the triangle, I'm going to put a protractor down and measure the angles that light make with respect to the normal line. I get approximately 55 degrees and 30 degrees for these two angles. I'm going to repeat the measurements for the opposite side of the triangle, the right side where light is exiting, and I get approximately 30 degrees and 55 degrees when I make my measurements. Now it's simply a coincidence that these two values are, happen to be the same for both the entry and the exit location. Make your measurements and go with what you get. You're going to then use the data in order to calculate the index of refraction of this unknown material. I'm going to perform two calculations again, one for each of the boundaries. At the entry location on the left side of the triangle, I'm going to go the index of refraction of air, 1.00, times the sine of the angle in air, which is 55 degrees, is equal to the index of refraction of the unknown material in x, times the sine of the angle in the unknown material, the sine of 30. I'm going to divide both sides by the sine of 30 and then pull out my calculator to get the final result. It comes out to be about 1.6383 and some change. Now you likely got different values for the second for the second boundary, so perform the calculations there. For me, I got the same values, so my equation is going to look the same, the algebra is going to look the same, and the result will be the same, 1.6383. Now take your two values for the index of refraction, which should be very close to one another, add them together and divide by two in order to average them, and I'm going to round my final answer to the second decimal place, 1.64. In the fourth and final example problem, I'm going to analyze the path of light through a triangular prism in order to determine the index of refraction of the unknown material that prism is made of. Like my previous examples, the analysis will begin by placing a protractor down upon the diagram in order to determine the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction at the two boundary. As light enters the left side of the triangle, I can measure the angle of incidence to be approximately 55 degrees and the angle of refraction to be 35 degrees. As light exits the triangle on the right side, I notice it's not bending whatsoever. It comes in at an angle of incidence of zero degrees and passes straight through, so there's no refraction there. When I do my calculations, I'm only going to perform them for the entry location on the left side of the triangle. I'm going to take my values for the N of air and the angle in air and substitute it into the Snell's Law equation. It becomes 1.00 times the sine of 55 degrees. I set that equal to NX times the sine of 35 degrees degrees. I divide both sides of the equation by the sine of 35 degrees, pull out my calculator, and eva evaluate the result to be 1.4281. Since there's no refraction at a second boundary, I don't need to do any averaging. I'm just simply going to round this number to the second decimal place, 1.43. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comments section below. Now for your action plan. Here are three resources that you'll find on our website, and I've left links to each in the description section of this video. You have a set of problems at the calculator pad, a Minds on Physics mission, and a tutorial page. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and I thank you for watching.